Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 24th class in our edible gardening series. My name is Sarah Bostic, and I'm the Sustainable Agriculture Extension Agent with the University of Florida in Sarasota County. And I am joined today by two of my fantastic coworkers, Carol Wyatt Evans, who is the Chemicals in the Environment Agent in the Sarasota County office, as well as Mindy Hannock, who is the School and Community Gardens Coordinator for Sarasota County. And Carol and I take turns uh, teaching a class every other week um, for our edible gardening series, which we started back in October. And Mindy has been the amazing chat box moderator for our entire series. Um, so because we have um, so many people in our classes each week, um, we ask that um, you just start typing any sort of questions you have right there into the chat box and Mindy will keep them organized. We spend the first 15 to 20 minutes of each class um, talking about a particular topic. Today's topic is trellises. And then we spend the rest of the hour answering your gardening questions. Um, and they can be anything related to edible gardening whatsoever. They don't have to be about the topic of the day. So go ahead and start putting any questions you, you have as they come up right into that chat box. And here we go. So we started this series back in October because we've just been hearing from so many people that they are gardening for the first time um, or gardening for the first time in Florida or just haven't gardened in a long time and are just really struggling to be good gardeners, the good gardeners they would like to be. And so we created this series really um, with the very simple purpose of helping people be the best gardener they know how to be. And um, the series is basically all created around um, the biggest questions and the biggest things that we see people struggling about with edible gardening. So today we're gonna talk about trellises. Um, I really love talking about trellises because trellises truly are one of the most fantastic things you can incorporate into your garden. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And the, the list that you can see there on your screen is the basic list that I'm gonna our way through during the next 15 or 20 minutes um, about why you might want and I'm hoping that as I talk um, you're also getting some ideas from the pictures that you can see on the screen because there's so many ways to go about creating um, a trellis or an arbor or just some sort of structure that gives support to plants. Um, and let's go ahead and dive dive right into what to what some of those benefits of trellises are, and then you'll see pictures as we go along to hopefully give you some ideas. So, to me, one of the best reasons for using trellises in gardens is that it takes advantage of that vertical space that you have in a garden, right? So, most gardeners are growing in something like a four by eight foot um, raised bed. That's really not a huge amount of space. And if you're growing a big, vining, sprawling, just sizable plant, one plant can quickly take up the bulk of a small garden. And so by using vertical space, you're really increasing the amount of actual usable space in your garden. And there's a lot of plants that do really, really well on trellises that traditionally have just been grown sprawling on the ground, but do, do so well in that vertical space. So some of those some of those vegetables are things that you can see on your screen. Things like pumpkins, winter squash, and melons. Um, a lot of those varieties grow ten feet or longer. Um, some of them will hit twenty feet, which is that's a huge plant, right? And so being able to grow that vertically saves a lot of space. And with some of those um, things like pumpkins and winter squash and melons, the actual weight of the fruit can pull the vines down or it can pull the fruit right off the vines if you're growing on a trellis. And so there's some really neat little tips and tricks to help support really heavy fruits growing on trellises. Things like using an old pair of pantyhose to actually create a little cradle to hold the weight of that pumpkin or melon or winter squash. And you can tie those pantyhose right onto your trellis and it, it'll just cradle that fruit right there in the air so you don't have to worry about uh, about the vine being pulled down by the weight of the fruit. And then there's other things that don't require a little cradle for the fruit um, that simply just grow really, really well right up a trellis. Um, things like lufa and bitter melon and chayote if you live in a particularly warm part of the world. Um, and then, um, you know, all across the United States and across much of the world, things like cucumbers, um, pole beans, 
peas. Um, they grow really big and tall and do really well growing up trellises. There's also um, a couple of kind of couple different categories of things like summer squash and zucchini. One category is bush varieties that grow as a nice dense little bush. They don't actually grow sprawling and big and vining. They just grow as a little bush. There also are varieties of summer squash and zucchini that do become big sprawling, um, big sprawling plants that can sometimes reach five to 10 feet in length. Those do really well also being supported up a trellis. Other things that fit into that same category of do really well growing up, uh, up a, a space are things like sweet potatoes, um, Malabar spinach. Um, this image that you see on the right side of your screen, that is a perennial that grows in Florida. Does, it does not grow as a perennial in pretty much the rest of the country, um, but it's a delicious green um, called Malabar spinach, not in any way related to the spinach that we typically get at the grocery store. And then things like trailing or running varieties of nasturtium that grow quite long. And I want to point out too, there is a distinction between plants that sprawl and plants that vine. Plants that vine have an ability to hold themselves onto trellises or onto poles or trees or whatever thing they're trying to grow up. It's usually through something like a little curly Q tendril that holds on. Um, or they're particularly good at spinning themselves around and holding really tight to, to whatever they're trying to climb, or maybe they have little sticky pads um, directly on those stems. Things that sprawl don't naturally grow up something, but you can, you can drape them and weave them and wind them around things to help them sprawl their way up instead of out. Just one, one note of caution, if you are growing things like gourds or loofah um, or some of the other particularly vigorous vines, um, be really careful where you plant them. Um, some of those can grow 20 feet or more in length and are strong. Um, they are strong enough to pull, um, pull roofing tiles off of, of a house. So be careful what you are growing them near um, so that you don't cause damage to And there's also another category of plants that really benefit from support simply because their fruit is so heavy that it can pull the plant over. So you can see in the picture here, um, this eggplant. And if you are a gardener from a northern region of our country, you have likely never grown eggplant that look like this. Um, in general in the north, eggplant kind of struggles along and you might get three or four fruit if you do a really good job on a single plant that stays relatively small. But down here in Florida, uh, plants like eggplant grow big and they grow a lot of fruit on a single plant. They grow so tall and have so much heavy fruit that they can actually, um, they can actually fall over from the sheer weight of the fruit hanging from them, which is a wonderful problem to have um, down here in Florida. Um, so you can see this is an eggplant plant that has a really, really simple support structure, really simple little trellis. It's simply just a plant that is tied with string to a wooden post, right? And you can see a little more support back behind it, just giving it some support. So these are some of the things if you're growing in a, in a really hot part of the country, or if you're growing in a pot, um, your plants can really use some support. And it doesn't have to be complicated support, but just enough support so that the, the weight of the fruit doesn't topple the plant. And so here's, um, here's three different ways of trellising something like a tomato, right? And the one that we most commonly see is this one right here, a tomato cage, right? That's, that's the most common type of, of way people support their tomato plants. Tomato cages are fine. Um, if you are gonna use a tomato cage, make sure it's a relatively tall tomato cage. There's a lot of cages that are actually better sized for a pet. Um, but there's so many other ways to trellis a tomato, um, and tomatoes that grow very, very large often outgrow tomato cages. So you, if you're growing long, um, really large, tall varieties of the tomatoes, you may want to consider a structure kind of like this. Um, something like if you're growing in a raised bed, putting in a couple of posts and attaching some something like uh, cattle, cattle panel wiring right onto that, or, or fencing rather, right onto that. 
uh, that support structure, and then you can just clip your tomatoes right onto that fence, and they'll, that's their support structure. Um, some people also love these funny little um, wiggly wire things for supporting tall growing plants. Um, if, you, if you do use things like um, those spiraling support structures for plants, make sure that the actual structure is very deep in the ground. Um, if you only put them in shallowly, the weight of the plant as the plant gets larger can actually just topple the whole structure over. So make sure they're really well sunk down into the ground. So another reason for using trellises in your garden or arbors or other support structures is simply the visual appeal of having different heights from a sheer aesthetic um, standpoint with the general pervasive culture um, here in the United States, we tend to be naturally drawn to things that have varying heights, that have some undulation of space, um, that, you know, some, some texture that's created by different heights um, and different sizes of plants. And so using a trellis is a wonderful way to create that variation in height in your, in your garden. And trellises themselves can also be just really beautiful. So it's a great way to just bring some, some interesting visual appeal into your garden and to focus people's um, vision to certain parts of your garden. And there's so many, so many ways to go about creating, you know, that visual appeal in a garden from really simple do-it-yourself to, you know, really ar artistic, very, you know, very solid structures like this, um, this grape, this metal um, raw iron grape arbor here. And then right behind the grape arbor, you can actually see a little do-it-yourself out of bamboo poles and twine. Just a little, little simple structure that's helping to support some really heavy flowers, right? So there's just so many ways to go about creating a trellis. To me, one of the absolute most important reason to, uh, to incorporate trellises and other support structures for your plants into your garden is that it vastly improves the pest and disease management in your garden. And garden spaces, especially really small garden spaces, tend to become really susceptible to really quickly because you don't really have the space to rotate plants. So using trellises can help prevent and slow down the spread of a lot of diseases. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is simply that your plants, um, plants to, to, to fend off a lot of the fungal diseases and some of the bacterial diseases, they need good airflow. And so when you have plants that are taking up that vertical space, that gives a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of space for air and wind movement to pass over your plants. That's really helpful in drying out wet leaves and just making sure there's enough air in the, in the area. And then a lot of plants um, are particularly susceptible to diseases that are hanging out in the soil and that need direct contact with leaves or fruit of a plant in order to infect the plant. Like you can see with these tomatoes in this picture, right? These are, these are some very unhappy looking tomatoes lying directly on very wet ground. So by, by having plants vertically um, off of the ground, that helps so much with, with minimizing disease and, and pest pressure in a garden. I just wanted to show you this picture to show you one way that farmers grow tomatoes in a greenhouse. This is, this is a fairly typical way that you'd see tomatoes grown um, in a commercial farm. Those tomatoes are very much vertical. Um, they are actually, you can't see it very well in this picture, but they're being supported on, on wire, wire supports that come, that come down, that drop down from, um, and the tomato plants are just actually clipped with little plastic clips. There's one right there. I, don't, I know you probably can't see that very well on your screen, but there's a little clip. There's a little clip. You can also use something like twine um, to hold those tomatoes vertically. And then you can also see that these tomatoes have had their bottom leaves clipped off. And that's to prevent leaves directly contacting soil. So that slows the spread of disease down enormously. Most home gardeners are not going to have a greenhouse to grow their tomatoes in. But you might have something like this, right? So this is a gardener that made a very simple, very effective, um, very inexpensive little trellis for their tomatoes out of metal um, electrical conduit. 
you can see right here, this is just a simple, simple little trellis made out of conduit with little corner brackets. Um, it's just sunk down right into their garden beds. And then I know you can't see this very well in the picture, but there's just um, a little simple string structure strung between the conduits. And that does the same job as the fancy setup that you saw in that greenhouse. Um, and then you can also see that the bottom leaves have been snipped for the most part and the soil is mulched so that there's not splashing happening from the soil on up. So you can create a lot of the same concepts that farmers use in, in larger, fancier sorts of ways. You can recreate those um, quite inexpensively in your own system by just learning the basics of, of what's going on. So you also tend to get much higher quality fruits when you're using trellises compared to when you are not. Um, and you can see in this picture, this is actually just a simple um, piece of, um, I just forgot the word, um, just a piece of, um, of wire, like a high gauge, high tensile wire, uh, or high, ga high gauge wire rather, um, that's just strung probably across a pole. Um, and cucumbers are just growing right, right across it quite happily. And you can see these, these cucumbers are growing very straight. Um, when you grow things like cucumbers on the ground, they have a tendency actually to grow at a, at a curve. Um, so they're not long and they don't tend to be as long and straight as cucumbers that are grown um, vertically on a trellis. And then cucumbers that are grown directly on the ground also will have um, the bottom side that's touching the ground tends to be white or pale yellow where it's not receiving any sun. So by growing on a trellis, not only are your fruits going to be straighter, but they'll be more consistently colored all the way around. And I'll show you another reason um, that fruits tend to be higher quality. So when you grow directly on the ground, um, regardless of what kind of fruit it is, the bottom side of that fruit is going to stay wetter and have more direct contact with all sorts of microbial life, some of which does really good things for the plant, some of which are disease mechanisms for the plant. You can see the cucumber, um, the two cucumbers on the right side of your screen, though you can see the pale, pale yellow underbelly of that cucumber that was laying directly on the ground, as well as little spots of disease. It's rot that's happening from being in, being in constant contact with damp ground. You can also see in this picture, cucumber simply also just kind of dirty. So you have to wash it before you eat it just to get the, the dirt off. It is also much, much easier to harvest plants that are grown on a trellis, right? It can be really hard to find plants, to find fruit um, that, is, that is growing in, um, in, uh, uh, right directly on the ground because the leaves tend to hide. Um, it's also easier to harvest when something is trellised because um, you don't have to bend over. You can, you can harvest while you're standing. So this is what a cucumber plant would naturally look like growing on the ground if it's not given something to grow up. And remember, cucumbers are natural viners. They want to grow up something. So this is a plant that was never particularly intended to crawl across the ground. And when cucumbers crawl across the ground, like here, their fruit is very hard to find and you have to really dig around um, in the foliage to find the fruit. And you often miss some of the fruit. And when you're not consistently harvesting all of your cucumber fruits, you'll have a few fruits that end up becoming quite mature. And when the plant feels like it has done its job as a plant in producing mature seeds, the plant, plant basically will stop flowering, which means it's stopping the production of new fruit because it's done its job. It's reproduced. It's produced viable seed and now it can be done. So one of the best ways to prolong the number of weeks you're harvesting from a plant is to harvest all of the ready fruit very consistently. When you're growing on the ground, it's harder to even notice that you have ready fruit to harvest. By comparison, this is cucumbers that are growing up different kinds of trellises. Um, and you can see here, um, this is actually just a really simple string. This is literally, you know, like a $3 ball of twine from the grocery store or the hardware store. You don't need you don't need fancy. Um, plants don't care what they grow up um, as long as it's strong enough to hold them. And then this is a cucumber plant that has a metal pipe um, and, and then a, just a simple a simple fence to grow up. Um, and you can see how much easier it is to see that fruit. And 
I love this picture because this is such a great reminder that we don't have to grow vegetables in a vegetable garden, right? They can be grown in so many creative places, um, like on a piece of string, literally a piece of string that someone's strung over their front door. What a lovely way to enter your house every day, right? Through, through a hanging curtain of cucumbers. And it's such a great way to know when you have a cucumber ready to harvest. Another thing I love so much about trellises is that you are truly only limited by your imagination. Um, if your imagination gets particularly big, you might also be limited by your budget. Um, but tr working with natural materials, um, you know, twigs and branches and things that you haul out of the woods can be part of that imagination, right? So you don't you don't have to buy a prefab somebody made it, somebody else designed it, trellis. You can really get creative in creating your own trellises out of natural materials. And I'm gonna go through a few of my favorite materials um, to work into trellising in, in a garden. And they're all just really different from each other and you can use them in so many creative ways. One of my, one of my go-tos is really, really rugged and relatively inexpensive. It's not, it's not the cheapest way to go, um, but it is far from the most expensive. Um, and that is a combination of pretty heavy duty fencing, like a cattle panel or a hog, hog panel, um, which is a type of fencing, um, hung on T-posts. So this is a T-post that you can see on the side, the left side of your screen. Um, this looks like it's probably a seven foot T-post. So it's about seven feet tall from top to bottom. That, that's my favorite size of T-post. They tend to run about four feet to about 10 feet in height um, in one foot increments, um, varying prices. You can get them at hardware stores, um, big box stores, things like that. And the basic way that they, they work is that you use some sort of um, device such as a post pounder. This is a post pounder right here. Um, or you can use a sledgehammer, um, there's various things you can use to pound them. And you pound them into the ground, straight down until this part is firmly anchored underground. That's what's gonna keep your post really steady. And then you just hang the fence on it. Most T-posts have little hooks that you can just hang a fence directly on. Wood is also another great thing to work into gardens. Um, you can use wooden wooden stakes, lattice, um, arbors. You can create your own arbors, buy a fancy arbor, um, scrap wood, just as long as you're avoiding treated wood, like pressure treated wood or painted scrap wood. Um, make sure that whatever kind of wood you're using does not have um, a product um, on it that is not food safe. Um, so make sure it's, you know, it's something that's really meant for a garden space. But you can see in this, um, this picture, this is a very, very busy picture. There's a lot, of, a lot of trellises and arbors and things going on in this picture. But you can see quite a few different examples of um, the use of wooden trellises in different ways. Um, the one that's kind of frontmost on your screen right here looks like a little do-it-yourself out of scrap wood, probably just screwed together or nailed together um, pieces of scrap wood. This looks like um, just a really simple wooden wooden lattice, um, unfinished, un, unpainted, that someone probably got at a hardware store. Back here is another one that is hung um, in, the, in a different direction, so vertically. Um, a little more scrap wood trellis back here. And then here you can see a, a beautiful, um, a, a beautiful wooden arbor um, that various things like, like grapes are growing up on one side and something else is growing on the other. Right, so there's so many different ways to be a wooden trellis. Um, you can get really creative with that. And you can also do something as simple as something like two, two simple posts um, that, are, that are strung with twine or netting or wire of some sort. Um, you know, and you don't even have to be planting in, in ground. You can be planting in pots and use trellises with pots. Pots are actually um, a growing space that could really benefit Potted plants are much less stable than plants that are planted. So you can do do it yourself. Um, you can buy a you know prefab wooden frame. You can use T posts. Um, you can even use something like a hook that's on the side of your shed maybe, and you can just run a string from from that hook, 
and then anchor it on the other side to the ground. And then that's something that plants can grow up. So you don't have to get fancy at all. You just have to think about how, how big is the plant I'm trying to grow and how so how long do I need my trellis to be? And one quick note on using netting, like you can see in this picture, this is like a plastic netting. Um, and there's also netting that's much smaller. So plastic netting like this, um, if you use it, just be really conscious of the fact that it can entangle birds and snakes in it and actually kill them. And it's a pretty, it's a pretty um, terrible way to die if you are a little creature. So if you are gonna use some sort of netting, um, be really vigilant about checking that netting, um, preferably have it up off the ground um, so that you can at least keep snakes out of it. Um, and then, you know, you might want to put up something to deter birds from coming near it so that they don't get tangled in that netting. And, then, you know, you can also get, you know, really fancy and really elaborate and much more expensive, um, although you certainly do not need to. Um, and big, big, strong links of metal rebar, um, metal beams, posts, also train all sorts of different kinds of trees and shrubs to actually create it, their own arbor. Um, you can you can train them to grow grow up and then in towards each other um, and to create their own their own beautiful tunnel of foliage. So there's so many ways to go about supporting plants um, and the big take home here is that they any way you do decide to go about supporting plants is a, is a really great thing for a lot of the plants that you want to grow in your garden. And it really helps with the, um, with the success of most gardens. And they can just simply just be beautiful. So give trellises a try. Um, and um, we want to remind you that next week is the final class in our 25 part edible gardening series that we started out six and a half months ago, just hard to believe. And next week, um, Carol and I are going to be team teaching the final class, which is companion plants and trap. And last but not least, um, if you missed any of the previous classes in our in our series, um, and you can see some of the, the names of classes right there on your screen, you can find them all on our brand new website that we are pretty excited about. Um, if you go to um, University of Florida, Sarasota Extension, edible gardening um, you should that should pop the, the top option should pop up the new web page on our office's website that website um, is an archive of all of the classes that are part of this edible gardening series so you can you can go back and watch all of the YouTube videos um, all the recordings of the classes um, as well as access all of the resource lists that we provide via email um, right after each class um, but you can watch them on YouTube now access the resource list right there on the website, as well as access all of the blog posts that we write each week to help dive a little deeper into some little piece of each of the topics that we cover. So we hope we, that you check out that website um, to go back and take a look at any of the classes that you missed. Um, hopefully you'll find some really great material on that website to help you with your garden success. So thank you all so very much, and we will stop right here.